You know what's interesting? The lockdown has done a lot more. And, and here's the thing. This is an opportunity for many families to make peace with one another. God in His infinite mercy and love, He has extended a little bit of time for you and your family. If you fight with your families and you don't get along with each other, this lockdown, there's a good chance it's going to continue and drag for, for a while. It's going to get to a point where your patience is going to be tested. Now, if you don't get along with each other, you are going to rip each other apart. Who's going to be able to survive? No one. So here's the thing. This lockdown that is taking place worldwide, it is to teach us all a lesson. All of us, now is the time for us to build character with one another. This is the hour for all of us to be at peace with one another. Many people, unfortunately, are going to start killing one another. Expect to hear that in the news. Expect to hear mothers killing their own children or fathers killing their own children. All because they can't stand the noise because they used to be busy working and they didn't have to deal with the things, with the noises and all the mess and all that stuff. But now their patience gets tested. See, the very last book of the Old Testament, Malachi, tells us the following. Observe this. The very last book of the Old Testament and the very last chapter. This is what the Bible says. So that would be Malachi chapter 4. Beginning from verse 5 and 6, the Bible says the following. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers lest I come and smite the earth with a curse you see before the Lord Jesus is revealed the second time before the second advent of Christ which is about to take place the hearts of the fathers must be turned to the children and vice versa, the children to the fathers. The Bible is telling us we are at that time. Why do I say this? Because this is connected to the lockdown today. This is connected to the lockdown. Why is it connected to the lockdown? Because you are forced to stay in your own homes. You are forced to stay in your homes locked up. Well, guess what? The people who you don't get along with well, fathers and children, the, the hearts of the fathers are going to be turned to the, to the hearts of the children. The hearts of the children will be turned to the fathers. The parents are going to be turned to their children. In other words, the hardened hearts, the complaints, the arguments, all of that is going to be turned. It shall be softened. Now, it's not going to be for every single house. It's going to be for some. Remember, many are called, but few are chosen. Remember these words. The question is, are you going to be among those who are, who are, who are, you know, the few that are chosen? Or are you going to be among the many that, that are lost? But they were called. God is calling the whole world right now. All of us are being called to give an account. All of us are being called right now to give an account of the word. So here's the thing. If you have a problem with your, with your family, now is the time to fix it. Not tomorrow, because tomorrow is not prom promised. In fact, what's going to come shortly from this point forward is persecution. So if you can't get along with your family, you're probably going to get into a fight with them. And then on top of that, you're going to, you're, you are going to receive the day, the, you are going to, the day of visitation of the wrath of God is going to come upon you. And it will catch you off guard. What should you be doing right now? Well, the parents that don't get along with their children, now is the time for you to start fixing bonds. Now is the time for you to start working together. If you are unequally yoked, you need to figure out a way of how to be equally yoked. This must be the center of your joy. What should you be doing right now? Be watching TV? No, get rid of the TV. If you have television in your house and you have children that are below 8 years of age, 
get rid of that TV. Do not allow the children to sit before the TV to watch it. Now I'm telling you guys this, listen. Do yourselves a favor. Protect your children. Do you know why I say this? Because when you protect your children, you're protecting yourself. Why? Because the blood of your children will be upon your own hands. So if your children get brainwashed by the media, when your children sit there and they, be, they are being indoctrinated by the false doctrines that are coming from the tube or from the television, should I say, your children, they are being taught doctrines of devils. And you, being the parent who's supposed to be the main watch person who watches over the children, you are going to pay the price for their sin. Well, they will have to pay. You, they're going to pay for the, the price of sin when when they when they walk away from you know when they when they continue to walk in sin. But you are also going to be responsible for their blood being being lost because you did not do your job. I know it sounds harsh. I know it sounds harsh, my friends. But you have to re you have to recognize how solemn these are, these times are. You must recognize how solemn these days are. This is not a joke. This is not a joke. Take these words as... I, I'm praying that you will take these words as serious warnings. Please, get rid of the television from your house. Whatever your children are glued to, eliminate it. Try to spend time with your children in the Word. The, the Word will soften their hearts. The word will begin to melt their hearts. The heart of stone will be converted into a heart of uh, into a heart of flesh. It will be softened. You see ladies and gentlemen, the Bible tells us if we look again. Do you remember you remember that, that remember I told you guys also in the other video where I mentioned that the, the that the lockdown that is taking place today it directly parallels the lockdown that took place in ancient Egypt there was a lockdown and the children of Israel they all had to cover themselves or they, they all had to cover the cover the doorpost with the blood of the of the lamb and then they had to go inside and they had to eat the lamb all night that was what they were doing the families were called to go back into their homes each family was to be locked in their own houses and they were to be eating the lamb the lamb is symbolic too Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the blood that is on the doorpost of their house in ancient, in ancient Egypt, that pointed to the blood, that points to the blood of Jesus Christ that is to be in the doorpost of our hearts. You see Bible prophecy coming to pass? Shortly after that, the angel of, the, the angel of, the, the angel of death passed through the streets and the firstborns were all slain. That was the plague of death. Shortly after that, delivery. God's people were delivered. So check this out. How much more different are we? You see, here we are, locked in our own homes. What should we, do? What should we be doing? The, the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Christ Jesus, is to be in our hearts. It should, be, it should cover us. We should be sealed. What should we do also? We should be eating the Lamb, eating the Word of God. Jesus Christ is the bread of life. He is the Word of God. We are to be consuming the Word during the lockdown. Soon from here after what happens, delivery is coming. God's people are about to be delivered. Now for those who depend upon pastors to tell them what they should be listening to and what they shouldn't be listening to, be very careful and take heed to this warning. You are going to stand alone on judgment day, but before that you are going to be tested all by yourself alone. If you depend upon what somebody else tells you, yeah, well, the Bible says this, the Bible says this, and they sound good and they sound convincing, convincing, and you believe that. You endanger yourself when you yourself don't go and open the scriptures. You need to open the Bible yourself. You need to know what's in it. Because thus saith the word of God, thus saith the Lord is what's going to save you. Not thus saith, oh, my pastor said something like that, and uh, yeah, my, and then, and then you are asked the question, are you a believer? Are you a strong Christian? Yeah, well, I'm a Christian. I mean, like, uh, my, my, 
my 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 parents my mother is a good good person and my father is a christian my father was a minister in fact i think even my grandfather was a was also a minister and a pastor and 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 all of that mumbo jumbo and i don't even know what i'm talking about right now but i just have to illustrate this for the sake of the video so that you guys can understand it it's for your sake see what the bible tells us is very clear and plain we are living in times where you are going to be tried remember temptation is going to come upon you you are going to be tested if you don't stand strong now you will not stand strong then what makes you think that you are just going to be you know you're going to have the character of christ if you can't get along with your family the character of jesus christ is to be formed right now that means the ceiling that takes place in fact if Re in revelation chapter 14 listen to this the 144,000 revelation chapter 14 begins by saying the following words listen to this the bible says beginning from verse 1 and i looked and lo a lamb stood on the mount sion and with him an hundred forty and four thousand having his father's name written in their foreheads the father's name is being written in their foreheads but what is the significance of the father's name well go back to exodus chapter 34. exodus chapter 34 the bible tells us the following beginning from verse number five exodus chapter 34. exodus chapter 34 the, in beginning from verse five the bible says and the lord de descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the lord he he's proclaiming his name and it says and the lord passed by before him and proclaimed the lord the lord god merciful and gracious long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth keeping mercy for thousands forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin and that will by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation pause the Bible just told us that the name of the Lord is connected directly to his character because he pronounces his name, but he's actually pronouncing his character. The 144,000 who are sealed, they are sealed with the character of their heavenly father. Let me give you another, another account. What is being sealed in our foreheads and what is to be in our, in, our, in our right hands? Look at this. The Bible tells us if we go to the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 11, check this out. Deuteronomy chapter 11, this is what the Bible tells us, all right? Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 13, the Bible says, And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God, and to serve him with all your heart, with, with, uh, and with all your soul, in verse 14, that I will give you the rain in your, I mean, of your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. In verse number 18, the Bible says, Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes this is the bible cle clearly telling us the commandments of god which is directly tied to his character it is to, it is to be bound where in our frontlets the forehead and in our hand that is what god wants to put in us it is his character his character must be developed now the thing is character takes time it's a process of time it is not a one day thing so you need to be strong and you need to be able to start now getting along with one another right now if you can't get along with one another but rather you want to tear each other apart that is not the spirit of god so now is the time for you since you're locked down in your homes to start making peace with one another lest the blood of your children be upon your hands make peace with each other now and make peace with your heavenly father now because probation is closing ladies and gentlemen there's much more that can be said about this we have to be excited about the Word of God and we need to be strong in the Word of God now. Eat the Word of God daily. Forget what the news is talking about. Now is the time for us to keep our eyes fixed upon Jesus Christ, lest fear come upon you. Alright? This is The Controversy 7. Thank you for tuning in and for joining me. You take good care of yourselves. Be safe, be blessed, and I'll see you guys next time.